Greetings family, this is Bomani Tayamba and we are live here on Revolutionary Cam and family we're here at Bomani Technology here in Georgia, USA and I'm here with my good brother Juma Rafiki Greetings Juma, how are you? Oh, man, I'm good, I'm doing real good today So family, if you don't know this uh, good brother uh, he has traveled with me to uh, Ghana, Senegal and the Gambia Tanzania and also Tanzania and Zambia and, Zanzibar and then, uh, well uh, Zanzibar is a part of right, Tanzania right. so those are four countries my good brother have traveled with us over the last few years and now he's getting ready to travel with us to Liberia March 29th to April 9th so that journey is set family and we're ready to connect you with an incredible reconnection of a lifetime so Juma this will be your fifth country yeah traveling with us to Africa mm -hmm. so the thing that I uh, want to find out from you before we just you know talk about how we you know we connected is uh why do you continue to come on these incredible journey with us to Africa wow that's a heavy question that's um, that's four countries so far and now five. First of all I guess um, I'd have to go back to uh, for a brief moment I'd have to go back to all, all the way back to my childhood when you know, being raised in African in Dayton, Ohio, and um, having um, that European last name like so many of us have. My last name was Egler, which is German. <laughs> it was a white man that told me that my last name was German. I didn't know anything about all that, you know. But it did spark a um, the question and put me on a lifelong quest to finding out who I really was and where I was from and um, so fast forward when I came across Africa for the Africans on, on your website and everything I I had understood through a series of a, other events in my life and meeting other people that you know I had to really go to Africa um, as a rite of passage and which we did in 2019 there you go, family, from 2019 to yeah. 2023 to 2024. So that will be a span of uh, four to five years. Yeah. yeah. And, and hopefully every year after that until I can no longer travel if I can't completely repatriate, you know. Absolutely. And that's why we're going to build a Black Star Pan-African community uh, full of homes uh, from uh, houses to uh, condos to apartments so you can just come and chill, kick back and enjoy this, you know, a sustainable life in a nice uh, uh, peaceful paradise where you have a nice beach and just a beautiful environment of just nice tropical energy where, you know, you can just grow your fruit trees and you can just be somewhere where, you know, it's your idea of uh, a utopia. Yeah, you can have like, um, like a, you know, a pretty much a, a really healthy, holistic lifestyle over there the stress level is like almost non-existent. Um, the foods are totally organic until further development comes along and we know what happens with that. But And then um, if you have any preconceived notions about living around other black people, you've never met black people until you've met Africans, right? You know, this maladaptive creature that exists in the urban centers of America, from Chicago to Los Angeles to Atlanta, it doesn't even come close to uh, coming across um, or meeting some of the beautiful people on the African continent who are still intact, so to speak, you know? Yes, ultimately it's, it's a great experience and, uh, you know, the, the goal is to this, uh, you know, take you on a journey where you're, you know, you're connecting to different uh, uh, cultures and you're just getting a feel of uh, this all-around feel of Africa right. you know like when I think about my four favorite and best countries in Africa at this uh, very moment uh, you know they're in different region you know Ghana in West Africa uh, then you have uh, Tanzania in uh, East Africa uh, and then you have uh, you know South Africa and Southern Africa and then you have Egypt and North Africa yeah. you know? and uh, that you know that has also you know gave me a good feel of this the African continent uh, so, you know, you look into this, uh, build that experience and this, you know, connect more with your people. And then beyond that, you know, you look into this, find out who you can really connect with so you can do some greater things in the future. Exactly. You know? so, so the experience of the journey, you know, it's, you know, I tell people that, 
you have an organized uh, tour schedule. We have these cool Africa for Africans t-shirt. Uh, that one that Juma have on is our Ghana, and this one is our Tanzania. Uh, so, and uh, we have tour books. Uh, we have a, have a few tour books uh, over here, and uh, there are also the tour book details on the website. And these are just uh, guide books that uh, talks about our entire journey uh, there in the country. So the books itself, uh, which is in uh, Juma, Juma, if you want to grab one of those, that'll be good also. Right. Uh, the, the books itself is a program guide, uh, you know, introduction uh, uh, to the tour staff, uh, the history of the country, uh, different tour sites, uh, if the, uh, things about investment, uh, we have our own uh, direct advertisement in the book, and it's just a, information just to get you ready. And the most important thing, it has the, the tour information, which is the itinerary and the uh, tour overview and certain preparation details or certain uh, you know what to do and uh, not to do and language translation and things like that. Uh, so that as we prepare you for the journey of a lifetime, uh, you know, Juma has been to it where we have been on many conference calls and we usually go through a lot of information so uh, you know it's a certain standards uh, that we set when we get you prepared and ready and that's what uh, you know, you have seen and uh, you know, you're ready to take it to that uh, next level and join us in uh, Liberia. Uh, so hopefully that itinerary and the things that we have on the schedule uh, you're excited about. Or maybe you're just ready to travel with us again to Africa in general. Well, uh, you know, like I said on previous videos before that, um, you know, the tour is a totally comprehensive tour. Pay one price and don't worry about anything. Everything else is included. Um, you know, you. You, you pay the price for the visa for the country that you're going to and then uh, the rest of it is all downhill it's one of the easiest um, tours that, that I advise that some of us might want to go on to who are taking the first trip to Africa other African-American tour groups that go to Africa you pay for your flight and then you pay for the tour you know it's, sep it's something that's separate uh, in order to get the experience but with Africa for the Africans it's just like you know one price everything else is taken care of. Absolutely and now uh, you know we have these incredible packages to where you know we just work out the best uh, you know situation for you to just get you a flight from where you are to the country that we're going to and back. Uh, so that's what Juma talking about whether we're flying on uh, Delta Airlines, KLM United, uh, Kenya Airways, uh, South African Airways or Ethiopian Airways or whatever. We just work out those sequence uh, to make sure that you're fully accommodated so that's what uh, Juma like. Uh, people like when you have things organized where they don't have to do much but uh, just be ready to go on the journey and then when you're on the journey the bus is ready and we have a day already pre-organized of right. what we're going to do and dinner uh, you know usually just out at a nice restaurant so we can socialize and just enjoy our you know our, our time connected with great dining. So we're never going to take you somewhere where it's a shack or uh, take you somewhere where you're serving bush meat or anything. Right, right. We're going to take you, to, uh, and if nothing else, uh, usually what we do is just order uh, you know, uh, dinner at the uh, hotel restaurant, uh, which is always nice. But uh, most of the time, our goal is to go out and just enjoy the country and just go somewhere and enjoy great dining. Very important part of your journey. And um, so all those things are always ready. So you now Juma is always ready, and I guess you're just ready for the same sequence in Liberia, which is that what what we have literally yeah. set up. Yeah, I just only take about eight hundred to a thousand dollars just for spending money and to buy my own lunch when I'm there. But um, the other two um, meals are provided, you know, free of charge. That's included in the tour, which is breakfast and dinner. Yeah, absolutely. And then you know, uh, lunch is. If you want to have more traditional food or more of whatever, you know, we'll, we'll take you to a flexible places where you can just order what you need. And uh, the day-to-day -day, uh, schedule, you know, you may be maybe at museums, uh, other historical places. You're just uh, you're out in town. Uh, you're out in the country. Uh, you're out just visiting the history and the culture of the country. Right. Uh, so four, that's four-star, five-star restaurants and hotels and things like that. You're not going to be in a conflict zone where you have to be worried about some war going on and stuff like that. We don't do that. We don't go to those places. You know, I'm a bit of a coward anyway. I'm not going to go any of the places, but, you know. Yeah, it's, a, yeah, it's not one of those journeys. It's nah. a journey for, you know, I believe in tourism and, you know, you know, you work hard in America and you want to visit, uh, you know, the African continent. You want to just get a feel of it. You know, I believe you just give... Uh, lay out a balanced experience. Now, just like, you know, you're in uh, Ghana with me, um, and then next, you know, we're in Accra, you know, which is just an 
uh, just a growing city of just uh, mm. you know, you know, Look, it looks you know, it looks beautiful. You know, this beautiful not, not skyline. Only, not only that, we traveled from the southern region and we went all the way north to Prom Prom, and then back down again. Yeah, it depends on yeah. what journey we made our way around, almost into the, in the center of the country on a, right. on a tour bus and things like that. But it's like you leave from Accra and you just, you, next thing you know, you're out in the country. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the, the newest journeys that we have, you know, you're out in the land of uh, the Black South Pan African community, Jihadzi, and then. Next thing you know, you had a beach right there, and then you just see this incredible, densely populated area where it's just opportunities for more and more of us to just connect our energy and just build a, build a community, be a part of the future of the town, and uh, support the growing uh, children that, that are there and you know, do something special and exceptional. Really? So I tell people, uh, yes, uh, you know, you're on an incredible journey, but at the same time, too, you know, we do our best to this, yeah. whether it's uh, supporting the vendors or going to a school and orphanage. Which yeah. we have been to, which right. we have scheduled on every journey. So, right. you know what you're doing. You're, you're spreading the love. You know, you're putting black dollars in black hands. Yeah, for and me, the one of the most important parts of donating um, in Africa was the schools. Um, I took, you know, I went to a local dollar store, ninety nine cent store. I don't know what city some of our viewers are from, but I bought a bunch of um, pencils and writing tablets and things like that. And, and I would donate those, that there. And when you see the children at these schools, um, I don't, the way it affects me, I can't keep a dry eye. You know what I mean? Because when I see how um, um, respectful these children are and how desperate they are to learn um, and the, the little that they have, I don't mind giving like two, three, four hundred dollars worth of materials to them. You know, um, I feel like it's my responsibility. Yes, brother, I appreciate the love. And uh, we know we need more good brothers and sisters, more good folks and good energy like uh, Juma does now. Come support energy and enjoy the experience. Uh, one of the things that you always mention is like you wish you'd have just taken these uh, journeys or connect to Africa at an early uh, age. At an earlier age. So, but I think that, you know, um, with, with, with most African Americans in this country, they, they, they don't get exposed to the ideology of Pan-Africanism at an early age. And that has to be, that has to happen at an early and earlier age, even starting at kindergarten, so that we, um, we can get most of our people back on a course and a track toward actual real uh, liberation and get them engaged in the struggle uh, for self-sufficiency. Um, I'm 70 now, but I didn't find out about it until uh, Pan-Africanism until I think I was in 40s. Of course, you know, they don't teach it in the school systems in America. So that's why it's even more important for us to start educating our children at an earlier age. Uh, yes, brother, absolutely. And that's uh, what we're talking about. Uh, so now that we know these things, uh, we're sharing them and we're just encouraging a generation of people to just be open to the future of uh, living, doing business, investing in Africa and just, uh, just being open to the future. Uh, so uh, that's what we do consistently. You see us in different countries. Uh, you, know, you see us at business conference. Uh, you see us pushing the energy. And, you know, and in between all of that, you, know, you have people moving, doing certain things. But uh, we definitely are uh, pushing more for an organized union of moves to where you know, you're just not just uh, being you know, in a certain location or part of a country where people are just like working you over. Right. Uh, you know, try to bring some familiar faces and some familiar energy around you. Uh, that way you can just uh, you know, get good counsel and just get uh, you know, people to also analyze whatever situation is going on. You know? So those are always things that we just try to just make sure people are clear on and uh, don't get yourself caught up uh, and, you know, and just make sure you just don't have a rose colored glasses on to the way you're just looking for fantasies in Africa. Uh, the African continent is a real continent growing. Uh, yes, we're talking about tourism, roots, culture, repatriation, business and investment. But also, you know, you have a real life there where real things are going on in uh, different countries. So that's why we just make sure we just do a great introduction so you're clearing things and you can just uh, move forward where we just uh, provide you the best assistant and connection. So yes, my brother Juma, we have on this Africa for Africans t-shirt on. Uh, this, um, the one I have on black is uh, the Tanzania journey that you were on last time, which is November 2022. And this one is the uh, Ghana May 2023 uh, uh, tour t-shirt. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So that's what we're doing, family. Pushing our strong energy and um, getting everybody ready for our next journey, which is Tanzania coming up in less than three months. Uh, then uh, South Africa coming up in a less than uh, coming up in exactly uh, four months, and then we're gonna kick off twenty twenty four with uh, Liberia. So. How excited are you about that one? Extremely excited. I can flew all the way out here uh, from California to make a to further my deposit with you uh, for that trip. So right now I'm sitting in Atlanta. I'm actually from Los Angeles. So you know, I'm, I'm, as you can tell, I took time out of my busy schedule in order to uh, to make that a priority. Yes, absolutely, family. Uh, me and Jumina just over here connecting, talking, and you know, this is literally his fourth journey with us. You know? yeah. I got, as I mentioned earlier, Ghana was the first journey. Uh, then uh, literally, uh, we went to Senegal and Gambia right there on the second journey. Uh, Tanzania, uh, the uh, third journey, and then now Liberia, the fourth journey. And that's all together five countries, uh, four journeys. So appreciate your energy, appreciate your support, and I appreciate uh, helping us build what we call Black Corporative Economics, where black people do business together, mm -hmm. get money together, and we spend, invest, and do business with black-owned business and black-owned companies right. and black people in general and kind of just build an energy where we do more and more things together yeah. with each other. Yeah. So that's one of the things that we're talking about, family. So it's more than just tourism and things like that. And it's not beyond just a movement. Uh, it's just us building what needs to be built. With a pan-African focus. Absolutely. You know, just like you and I have some conversation earlier about uh, how the state of Israel was built and how uh, different um, members uh, put certain energy in it to where you know, they're forced to be reckoned with to, to this day. Exactly. So that's what we're talking about, family. Uh, we're talking about Africa for the Africans to build our own force and energy to represent our African continent. Uh, so uh, reaching out to our brothers and sisters out there in the African continent and African diaspora to connect, come in union to where more and more of us are doing business together, import, export, setting up uh, future establishment on the African continent. And if you're here in America working, uh, make sure that uh, the system don't take everything that uh, you know you you're working for. Make sure you reinvest uh, uh, a portion of your, that energy into the future of Africa. And we're talking about us working together as a people to where we can literally compete. You know, it's like people when people ask me who's the most successful foreigners or the most successful people in general mm -hmm. in West Africa, and I'll say uh, you know Lebanese, and then they say what about East Africa? I'll say the Indians. Yes. You know, and so you have been to East Africa and, and West Africa and you have seen these things. So I'm telling uh, my brothers and sisters out there, all the things that me and Jumla have seen and experienced and traveling around the African continent, we're telling you that it's things that those of us in the, in the black Americas, in the Americas, can literally be doing on the African continent. You know, but first you just have to open your mind and you have to just be willing to just make your way to the different countries. And then you have to just have your people around you that you can trust and do things with and you go out there and compete and connect with other people. And these are markets that we need to have. Other than that, you know, you're gonna see an African continent to where it's being just dominated by anybody else. Yeah. You know, and it's fair it's fair competition. It's like if you don't do it, someone, someone else, else will. will. So, you know, and I would never sit around and make uh, give reasons or excuses for anything. You know, I've shown things on our live as far as nations with natural resources, without natural resources. But when it comes bottom down come down to the situation you know, you're talking about leadership organization, you're talking about the will to fight, to compete, the will to get up and, uh, you know, put the work in in general and then make things happen uh, without reasons and excuses. So that's what we're talking about and that's what we're showing you. Right. And that's really important. I mean, um, we have to start with building our own social infrastructures here and the and, and the, in order to take advantage of all the opportunities which are unlimited on the African continent. But it, like I like you just expressed, we have to have a pan-African focus. We have to take care of ourselves first. We have to set ourselves up in a position where we eat first before um, we can be practice ph philanthropy or giving throughout the world. Um, Africa is the richest continent on the planet. I think we all know that by now. Anybody can Google that to get, in order to get that information. <laughs> and um, we've been under subjugation for far too long and practicing the, the types of self-destruction that's going on right now in urban centers. So we need to free ourselves from that and free our minds from that as um, Bob Marley had said. And um, once we do that, then there's nothing that we can achieve. And that's simple, family. Uh, it's um, 
the will to fight to compete is you know it's uh, it's something uh, you know where uh, you know where you know we're in the world of competition you know mm -hmm. you have seen people rise up as underdogs and they just uh, you know, defeat the competition so that's that's how I feel I mean um, you know some people may say you know you guys are fighting a losing battle or certain things don't let people discourage you and things like that right. uh, you know you're here in America you know do what you need to do to build a future. And uh, you know our goal is to connect, you know, Black America, or the Americas, uh, to the African continent, and to to where where the people just have a, a world of a global Black business pipeline, like that serious. Right. Uh, and uh, that would change the dynamics of things, because you know, back again to what we always talk about, uh, the state of Israel. I always ask people, I was like, what is the most successful country in that uh, area that's called so many different things, uh, you know, uh, around the Arab world? Around the, uh, you know, right there in uh, now what used to be uh, uh, Northeast Africa, and people say the, the state of Israel, and then, you know, so you just well, look at, um, you know, look at uh, what people who are willing to do to create their own state, create yeah. their own nation, and getting things done. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying whatever is right or wrong. Just leave the same people. Hey, uh, and then you have many other countries. They they say they want to build a nation up. They only want to make certain things happen. They make these moves. So us uh, connecting and working with our own people in the African continent and energizing each other and say, hey, let's compete, let's get into certain industries. Like one of the things you don't see much of a certain level of manufacturing uh, and it's certain industrial aspects that can you know, easily, be, uh, easily be done by uh, minds who are focused. Uh, you have other external issues, you know, governments and people and certain things that limits those things. But um, uh, nevertheless, uh, these are a world of opportunities. So. That's uh, the journeys that we do, you know, tourism investment, and you'll see other things, and maybe you have other friends that say, you know what, I've been to this country, Ghana, or I've been to this country, Liberia, and I see some great opportunities uh, that we can get into, let's, let's do it. So what we're doing is like, it's an introduction and getting you connected to the country, and try to, we try to find the most adventurous things to do. I'm trying to see, uh, uh, you know, we have some incredible things in Liberia, but uh, if you're living on the way with us to like uh, South Africa in December, we go, we go up into these cable cars up in the mountains. Yeah, I've never been to South Africa. I, I would like and, to go and the same there. thing like in Brazil. Mm -hmm. So uh, or in, in Ghana, we just go to the forest and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a uh, you know it's a it's it's a continuous uh, adventure. Or you know like we went to Tanzania. You, we're out there in our bus and you you know seeing wild animals in nature. Yeah. And that was a you know a certain experience. Scary, but good. Yeah, you're in a bus that's enclosed, but <laughs> I want to know what people feel when they're in the safari vehicles and animals right. are coming up to them. Right. And you know, these animals can leap, like, uh, next thing you know, they're in your I vehicle. I know, we got, we got off the bus in Tanzania in the park, and there was this huge mile of dung that was down there by the water, and the women were getting off the bus and going down to the water, and I told them, I said, look, I don't know what put that there, but you might want to <laughs> step, back, back, yeah, step <laughs> back a few hundred yards from that in case it comes out. But um, it was exciting. I mean, there's just there, to be in the park and everything, and to smell the air, because when you come, when you go to Africa, the, even the air is alive. I mean, you think like out here in Atlanta, you listen to uh, all kinds of sounds coming out of the forest, but it, but in Africa, it's in the very air that you breathe. The air here in America is sanitized with so many um, exhaust fumes and everything else. But when you land on that continent, man, you you just take it all in through the nostrils, and you know that you're home. You know that you're home, right? And there's a lot of work to be done, you know, and a lot of opportunities to take advantage of um, that you're not going to get here. And I guess the most beautiful part about that is that it, it's there for us first because we're the indigenous people, not only of Africa, but of, of this planet. So we're, I mean, it's, it's, it's just there for us, all of it. You know, we just have to be willing to put in the work. There you go. Yeah. So family, uh, it's uh, you know from uh, getting you open and uh, giving you an introduction into the different countries. You know, from there on, it's work to be done. You know, like sometimes people travel with us to certain orphanages in school, and I was like, you know, if they feel that uh, you 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 can do certain things, now go ahead and take on a challenge. But we're not here to pressure anyone. But uh, these are the things that has to be done. Uh, so this it's more than just a you know a, a journey where we just on vacation or a holiday or just tourism right. uh it's us um making sure it's uh it's set up to where we support as many as possible uh black owned organizations uh whether it's hotels uh tour companies and so on as best as you can 
based on geographics and based on countries. You're limited in certain cases. When we talk about uh, West Africa, we talk about our blackest region, and that's uh, that these itineraries are 100% of this um, what we have set up to where you know we are supporting the local economy, uh, and then we also just encourage other people to do the uh, the same. Uh, don't be in a situation where you're on the African continent and then you're supporting everything other than black owned business because right, exactly. that can happen because right. uh, you have other people also enterprising you know because other people mm -hmm. around the world is seeing that Africa is a great continent to, to as far as establishing future business uh, and things so you know it's um, it's it's an open game now so uh, that's why we're just making our way around as many countries as possible and then just building a network and getting our people connected and assisting our people with, uh, with passports, visas how to get their connections and then make it as fruitful and energetic as possible you mm -hmm. know and that's part of that network that we have to build and maintain there um, I mean it's, you know for Africans at home and abroad so that we can take full advantage of our homeland of our motherland in order to ra raise ourselves up to the the, um, the level of prosperity and glory that we have inherited right but if we don't, like I said once before, if we don't, if we're not willing to do that, then it won't happen. But it's so much easier than what, um, um, than what we think. You know, we just have to take that one first leap. And that's why I encourage so many of, of everybody, the viewers included, in order to take that first trip to Africa if you've never been there and then take with Africa for the Africans so that you get a sense of what's possible, you know. Absolutely. So family, that's what we're talking about. So the website is africafortheafricans.org and uh, name is Bomani Tayemba and you can look up the information on all of the countries that we have traveled to, all of our information online and you can just reach out and connect and I uh, will get you connected on the journey. We have uh, group pages, we have um, newsletters, we have this an array full of information and then right now currently all the countries that we talk about, uh, there's updated schedules in 2023 and 2024 uh, right there on our website. Uh, we can just view, check it out, and, um, and then you're on YouTube and Facebook, you, you can just check out the photos and the videos. All of these uh, documentation go all the way back from 2006, 17 years ago, when we started our Africa for Africans journey and making our first initial connection to Ghana in December 2006. So from there on, we've just been building and building, and then we've been transforming more into real estate development at Black Star Pan African Community, and also looking to uh, work with other groups and network, so we can build an energy in the uh, incredible country of Liberia, and work with other countries and work with other projects, and really build a full-fledged repatriation movement. So yes, family, appreciate everyone energy, and we're gonna keep you posted, keep you updated, and the journey continues. So a good brother Juma, before we close, let me know if you have anything else you'd like to share as far as your experience in Africa traveling with us and uh, why you recommend people traveling with us. Because it's Africa for the African. Yes, my brother, that's how we keep it strong. All right. So family, the journey continues. Stay strong. <laughs>